Hey, it's Pat from PJM Scheduling Services. So um, today we're gonna add some activity codes to our schedule that we, we've been working on. So activity codes are used to uh, basically add more information to an activity. So for instance, you might have different subcontractors that you're working with on your project. So you wanna assign which subcontractors are working on which activities and that'll allow you to filter and uh, group and sort by those different con subcontractors, or you might have areas that you wanna break things further down into. So a lot of, I mean, it's endless what you can add in codes, you know, why, why you would add codes and what codes you would add. But let me just show you, um, it's pretty simple to, to start adding those codes. So in this case, let's add a responsibility code, like for a subcontractor. And so I have my project open, I'm gonna to go to enterprise and activity codes. Right now I don't have any global code set up so I just get this uh, little message there. But uh, we talked a little bit um, in a few episodes ago about the difference between global and project code, um, you know, the, the global setting versus project setting. So global is um, if you're using, if you're using a database that's shared with multiple users so you're a big contractor and you have projects going on all, all across the country and you have multiple users accessing the same database and you want access to the same information like codes and calendars and stuff like that. You, you would build out your global uh, library for, for that. If you're just working on um, an individual project or maybe just a few projects and you're the, the only user, you have a standalone database uh, you would just use the project one and that's the one I typically go with. Um, so you would click project and then we do modify and this is where you add your, the type of code that you want to have. So say I want a, a subcontractor code and maybe an area code. So I have those two codes now and then I can close this. So now if I use this drop down, those two uh, code libraries that I created have now are now shown here. So let's start with our subcontractor code. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add, um, say we have ABC contractor. So it's ABC concrete. And then we'll do one more for, uh, you know, DE roofing. So DE roofing. And so we'll close that. So now I want to assign those, um, those subcontractors to an activity. So what I do is I can right click on the table here, columns, and then, um, and then I would go, I would use this activity codes project. I would use that drop down, and here are the two codes that we added. So I'll do the subcontractor. I'll add that over. Now I have this blank column here and I can click on say structure and I can double click this, uh, this blank column here and up pops this empty box and it says display current project values. So if I do this drop down caret here and I say filter by, and what I want is all values. Cause right now it's saying it's only the value, it's only showing the values that are assigned and there's no values assigned, so it's blank. So I want all values. So there are my two um, subcontractors that I have. So in this case, I'm gonna add ABC roofing or ABC concrete, excuse me. And then maybe my roofing guy here, I can do it again and I can say DE roofing. Uh, the other way of doing it is you can just right click on an activity. So let's go to structure um, and I could say assign activity code and I have to go to my project here and then here are my codes for the project. And again, I'm on all values, which is the one that I want and I can say ABC concrete and that assigns it there. So then uh, the other way you can see that it's assigned is just by going down here to your codes section and you can see um, all of the codes that are assigned to that individual activity. Um, so yeah, that is how you assign activity codes to your project. Um, if you're wondering, oh, well, how do I, like, why is that even useful? Um, 
you can run filters for, I'll do a separate video on running filters and layouts and stuff like that. But pretty quickly, you can just create a new filter, call it like your subcontractor filter. And then we're gonna say where subcontractor. So that's my code that I created is under, and I can say ABC concrete. I'll double click that, press okay. And then I'll apply that and I see, Hey, look here, here's my two activities that are, uh, that, that are assigned to that subcontractor. But I'm like, man, all there's all these blank WBS sections that I don't want there. Well, what I can do for that to fix that is go to my group and sort, and I can say hide if empty and apply that. And then that takes those away. So now I have, I'm, I'm able to focus on just my activities for those subcontractors. So hope that helps. See you in the next video.